Hello students, uh, if you're watching this video, you're watching for Vector and NetForce Notes. Um, what I'm going to need you to have out is uh, at least one highlighter. Um, you could probably have a couple of different colors, that would probably be helpful for you, and a pencil to write with. I need you to follow along just like what I do on this paper on your screen, so your paper should look just like mine when you're done. So here's where we're going to start. In class, you've already talked about the quick notes. We're talking about vectors. I'm going to show you how to make vector diagrams. In order to do that, though, the place where we have to start is talking about friction and normal force. So here's what I need you to do. On the left side of this paper, I'm going to write down in words what those two things are. And then on the right, I'm going to give you a, a picture as an example. So for friction, what you need to know is that friction is a force that opposes motion. So friction is a force it's a push or a pull, and it always goes opposing motion. So if you have something that's going to the left and there's friction involved, friction is a force that points to the right. We'll come back to an example of that in just a second. The other one is normal force, and what a normal force is, we talked about this just a little bit in class yesterday, the normal force is the reason why you don't fall through the floor. It's when I leaned up against the countertops and I didn't go through the countertop. So I'm going to write it like this, kind of as an example more than a definition. I'm going to call it the reason you don't fall through the floor. So as gravity is holding me to the floor, that's a force pushing down, but I'm not accelerating. So like we talked about yesterday, that means that my forces must be balanced. And if I'm balanced, there has to be a force pushing back. That's the normal force. So now for some pictures. I'm going to draw almost all of my representations today on this video by starting with a box. So this box represents any, any old object. And I'm going to say that this box, just for the sake of this picture, has a weight of 1,000 newtons. I know that's kind of tiny, but it just says 1,000 newtons inside the box. Let me zoom in a little for you. Now that we have a box, we're going to add in all of the stuff around it. So I'm going to show it sitting on a surface. And I'm going to start with the friction. So before, actually, before I do that, I'm going to say, I'm going to define this box as not moving. So I'm going to say that somebody is pushing on this side with a force of 50 newtons. And I'm going to call that the push, just so we don't forget what's going on in there. And then, uh, because I've said that this box is not moving, there has to be something pushing back against it. Well, it's not a person. There's nobody going to be in my example, nobody standing over here pushing back. But in this case, it's going to be friction. So maybe this box is sitting on some really rough surface. But on the other side, pushing back, because friction always goes opposite the, the opposing motion, there's going to be friction. I also said that this box has a mass of a thousand newtons, or a, or a weight of a thousand newtons rather. That means that the box is pushing down on the earth with one thousand newtons of force. But this shows an unbalanced picture right now. So the left and the right sides cancel out, making it balanced. If I left it like this, what I'm representing to a physicist is that this box is going to be accelerating down, because the way I have it drawn is unbalanced. But we have normal force. Normal force is the ground pushing back with a thousand newtons, showing that we're indeed in balance. So here's your first example. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. The first example shows, right here in the middle of the page, example number one. It's a box that has a weight of 26 newtons sitting on a table. There's a strong breeze that blows through the room with a force of 5 newtons to the left, but the box does not move. So I'm going to highlight the key information that we need from this passage, and you should do the same. So here I go. The first thing that I notice is that it's telling me that I've got, mostly I'm just looking for the numbers, it's 26 newtons sitting on a table. It's going to be experiencing a force from the wind, 5 newtons to the left, and then also an important feature of this, the box does not move. So I know that everything that I draw should be balanced when I'm done, if I'm right, if I do it right. So here I go. I'm going to start with the box sitting on a table, and I'm going to start with the first piece of information that was given to me. So this was 26 newtons. 
So I'm just going to label the box, and then I'm going to draw in the arrow showing the force pushing down on the Earth with 26 newtons. Now because this box is not moving, I know that normal force has to be pushing back with the exact same amount, 26 newtons. Now in the pr question it said that there's a, a weak force from the breeze pushing 5 newtons to the left, so this arrow is going to represent the wind pushing to the left, and again this box is not moving so it has to be balanced. That means that there has to be something pushing back against the breeze, that would be friction with the exact same 5 newtons. So there is our totally done free body diagram. I know it's done because it said the box doesn't move and all of my up down forces cancel out 26 and 26 so that's balanced and my left to right cancel out too 5 newtons and 5 newtons with the friction. Now we're going to go on to example 2. For example number 2 it says that two students are dragging a box of books. I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit. So two students dragging a box of books to the library. One is pushing. So a grand total of three students working together to move these books. I'm going to highlight, just like I did on the last question, the key things that we need for this problem. So the things that I need to keep in mind here is that the first two students are dragging the box with 50 newtons of force. It also says that the one that is pushing is doing so with 15 newtons of force. And then the last piece of information that it gives us is that the weight of the box, or last two pieces rather, is 60 newtons. And it's telling us what friction is. It's saying 30 newtons. Now this question is a little bit different than the last one because I don't know for sure if this box is moving or not. Not yet at least. I'm about to find out. So here's how we're going to do it. First thing I'm going to do is again just set up my picture with a box in the middle, show it sitting on the earth. It said in the question that this box has a mass of, or a uh, downward force from weight of 60 newtons, so I like to label that first, and then show it pushing down, 60 newtons. Okay. Now because this box is sitting on the earth with 60 newtons and it's not floating up into the air or going through the earth, I know that the normal force has to be pushing back with the exact same amount of force. Okay. Now I'm going to draw in the student. So it says that the first, I'm going to start with the first two that are dragging the box. They're pulling with 50 newtons of force. It doesn't say which direction, so I'm just going to pick one. Uh, it says that they're dragging, I'm going to pick that way, each one with 50 newtons. So that's 50 newtons for that student, and then another arrow for the second one, 50 newtons. <laughs> And then it also says that the last student was pushing the box with 15. So he's kind of the, the lazy slow one, I guess. So I'm going to have to squeeze in another arrow. Sorry, it's going to be tiny in there. I'm actually going to put it over here, 15 newtons. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. So I've got these three students dragging and pulling the box all to this direction. And I'm going to, just to make my life a little easier, since they're all going the same direction, I'm going to add those up. And that comes out to 115 newtons, all going in that same direction. That's just a note to myself. The last piece of information said that friction was 30 newtons, and friction always goes in the opposite of direction of motion. So as I have it drawn right now, what this picture says is that the box is going to be moving to the right, because it is an unbalanced force. Well, if it's moving to the right, friction goes the opposite direction to the left, and it said 30 newtons. The last thing for me to do is to say whether or not this thing is moving. So in the up-down direction, the 60 from its weight and the 60 from normal force cancel out. So in the up-down direction, we have no motion. But in the left to right, 115 newtons are going to the right, and I'm going to cancel that out with the 30 newtons from friction. And what I'm left with is 85 newtons. Brain fart there. And that is in the direction to the right. So as a final answer, I would say box will move or accelerate to the right because, and this is the important part, 
it has unbalanced forces. And that unbalanced amount now that we have just calculated, sorry you can't see that, that we've just calculated is 85 newtons to the right. I'm going to post this video on my website if you need more help with this topic, but right now during class I need you to be working on the questions on the back. Thank you and good luck.